Hi there, and welcome back to another video on how to use Pokemon Studio at PSDK. In today's video, we're going to be going over how to manage and create new Pokedexes and how to access them in game. Without further ado, let's just get started as this is going to be a pretty quick and easy topic to cover. As always, make sure Pokemon SDK is fully up to date. As of recording, this version is 0.26.14. And then we're going to click over here on the database tab and then click on Pokedex. Now right away you're going to notice that you're going to be able to select between the national pokedex and a regional pokedex by default and if you click up here you're going to be able to change the name i'm fairly certain this name isn't shown at any point in game but i could be wrong i believe this is just going to be back end and as always you can click over here to change the translations but again i think this is back end now just for clarification the National Pokedex is basically every single Pokemon that's in your database. If you scroll down to the bottom, you're going to notice that we're going to have Axerval and War Rush here. I'm fairly certain that these got added automatically when I created them, as I don't remember ever opening this tab and adding them. But if you go down to the Regional Dex, and then you come all the way to the bottom, you're going to notice that they're not there. So. The regional dex is not going to automatically add your database, but the national dex is just going to include everything from your database as you can't even add Pokemon in the bottom right. So you may be wondering, since we have a national dex, we have a regional dex, what's the point of having more Pokedexes? The answer to that is pretty simple. Um, basically, if you have a multi-region game, it makes sense for you to have multiple Pokedexes. Let's say for instance that instead of making a completely brand new game, you're deciding to remake Johto. I think that would be the easiest way to explain this. Um, obviously, you're gonna have your Johto Pokedex, and you could also, now in that game, they just gave you the national Pokedex because that included only Kanto and Johto. Nowadays, there's nine regions, so we need to take that into consideration that we can't really just give the national Dex if we're making like a, a Johto clone. So we would need to make a new national dex or a new regional dex or just a dex that you're willing to give that person, but you're still going to need that initial dex as well. So in the end, you're going to need multiple dexes. That's just one example, but I'm sure you can think of another one, or I'm sure there's somebody that's looking at this video that has their own idea that they want to do. So anyways, let's just get right on into it. If you're going to make a new Pokedex, you just got to click on this button up here. And then you can just name it whatever you want. Typically, it's probably going to be the region's name as that would be the easiest way to distinguish it. So we're going to go with Kanto. Now the Kanto Dex does start with one, but I believe other Dexes, um, they do start at later numbers. Um, you don't really need to do that. It's up to you. Um, it's, it's more of just an aesthetic, whether you want your initial number to be number one or if you want it to be like 201 or, you know, it. this is all that's gonna change. Now down here is the identifier. This is actually gonna be used in game when you decide to give a Pokedex to a player. If you wanna give them your Kanto, your regional or a different Pokedex, you can decide by using the identifier. Now a cool feature is that you can actually duplicate from another Pokedex. Again, this is gonna be useful for those people that are making maybe um, a Johto clone where you're probably gonna be pulling from one dex and just adding on to it or something. Um, but for this example, we're just gonna do none. We're not gonna be copying, but you could pull from either your national dex or your regional dex, it's up to you. So we're gonna just do none and we're gonna add this Pokedex, which is now creating the Kanto regional Pokedex for us. And I'm pretty sure we all know that it does start with a Bulbasaur. And you're gonna see this button down here that's gonna say add evolutions. This is just a quality of life feature that's gonna make things a little bit easier for you. Instead of adding Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, and Venusaur, one after the other, you can just click on this and do add Pokemon and it's gonna add them all in order. Another cool thing is if I deleted them or if I just never added them in the first place, there's another button for you to do it later. You can click on evolutions here and it's gonna fill it in for you. Now what's really cool is if I deleted them and then I added the Charmander line, for example, I could then go to uh, Bulbasaur and I can click evolutions and it's still going to fill them in the right order while also pushing the Pokemon under them down to the right number. You can also choose to grab this from the side and manually change the numbers by just moving them around. It will update once you let go. Now another cool thing is that let's say we wanted to add Cubone, whoops wrong button. Let's say we wanted to add Cubone to our game and obviously Cubone has a regional variant. We have 
two different Marowaks. We have the Alolan one and we have the Kanto one. So we are gonna add the regular Cubone and its evolutions to the game. Now, if I wanted to add the other Marowak to the Pokedex, whoops, we would click on the edit button and we could change the form to one, which will then change it to the Alolan Marowak. Now, I'm gonna suggest something different though. With how Pokedex entries and just text in general works with PSDK, I almost wanna recommend that you make all of your regional variants a brand new Pokemon. The reason for that is that you can't modify the Pokedex entry for a form by itself. This is just due to how PSDK pulls its Dex entries and there's not really much that they can do about it. They would have to rework a lot to add support for you to be able to have this multiple Dex entries based on which form you are. So it's just kind of easier to make a brand new Pokemon if you want to have support for both the regular Marowak and the Alolan Marowak and you want them to have two different Dex entries, you're gonna kind of have to do it that way. Now, I don't personally feel like filling in <laughs> an entire Pokedex. So what we're gonna do is since I know I have a Clefairy, we're just gonna add Clefairy here. And we're gonna add the evolutions. And now, as you saw, it also added Cleffa, which comes before Clefairy. So even though I technically started with Clefairy, it adds the entire family and it adds it in the correct order. So let's now create another Pokedex. We're gonna create the Johto Pokedex now, just so that we can show these off. And we're gonna start with the first number being 12. Hey, let's do, just to make it a weird number, let's do 22. And we are gonna import from the Kanto Pokedex just to show what that looks like. And as you see, it's starting from 22 instead of one. And we are going to hit save. Now, the reason that I wanted to do this was so that you can see that Clefairy is 31 in the Johto Pokedex and that you'll see that Clefairy is 10 in our Kanto Pokedex. As well, in, a, in our regional Pokedex, Clefairy is going to be a totally different number um, of 36, okay? So now, I want to show you real quickly how this would look in-game. So, if you are curious how you would give the National Pokedex to, a, to the player, all you need to do is enable the Pokedex with Switch 100 and also enable the National Pokedex by turning on Switch 99. Now, if you wanted to give them a regional Pokedex instead of the National one, all you need to do is turn on Switch, 90, uh, Switch 100 and then also type in Pokedex variant equals and the ID right here. If you're curious how you would get this ID, you actually need to go back to Studio and this is what I was saying earlier is it's just the identifier, but if you don't remember what it is, you can just copy it from here or here or here. Okay. And when we paste those, you're going to notice that it's going to say Johto because that was the last one that I copied. You need to make sure that your national dex is off, but that your Pokedex is on. And then you need to specify which one you want to give. Otherwise, it's just going to give that regional one by default. So to show off how I'd give a Kanto one is I would make sure that the national index is off, turn on the regular one, and then in a script command type money sign pokedex.variant equals, and then the ID symbol of that, dex, uh, that pokedex that I want to enable. So how this is going to look in game is once we launch, I'm going to go inside and outside just to make sure that my events refreshed. And if I press V, you're going to notice I don't have a Pokedex. I just have the Pokemon, the bag, and the usual options. Now, if I interact with this person, it's going to say the National Dex is now enabled, which is going to give us the Pokedex button at the top. And when we interact with it, it's going to say number 36 is our Clefairy. It's going to say the same thing here because we're using the regional Dex. Now, I did turn off the National Dex, but I left the Pokedex on. And now we've switched to the regional Dex which isn't too much different than the National Dex because it's going to have all of the Pokemon from Generations 1 to, I think, Alola. But if we look at it, it's still going to say 36. Now, if we interact with our Kanto Dex, which, if you remember, is going to have Clefairy at 10. And we go in here, we're going to see that Clefairy's number is 10. Now, Let's interact with this one, which is our Johto Dex. And then when we go to the Johto one, we're going to see that Clefairy is 31. And when we look in our Pokedex, we're going to see that Clefairy is 31. 
Hopefully this video helped you guys. I know this is a short one, but there really isn't too much to cover in this, and I hope that it helped you. In the next video, we're going to be going over groups and zones, which is basically how the game understands where you're at, whether you're inside, outside, in a cave, and what wild encounters to give you. So next video is going to be a bit longer as it's going to be a lot to cover. And then after that, we're going to get into the trainers and then the quest tabs. And then we're pretty much done with this Pokemon Studio tutorial. And we'll be able to move into mapping and doing more event-based stuff. I hope this series is helping you guys and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.